All right, everyone. I'm glad to have you back again for this session as we quickly look into an interesting topic, which is sending is easy and delivery is hard. So this topic is going to be delivered by two wonderful speakers and um, who are experts in this game and in this industry. So just quickly for me to introduce them and then we can begin the session. But then um, just let you know again, this is Lua Tobi and I'll be having the second part of today's, um, I'll be anchoring the second part of today's um, sessions. Okay, so um, quickly, uh, we have Jacob. Um, Jacob has been in the email industry for over 15 years, and um, he started on the receiving side, operating xmail.cz, and then transitioned to the sender side when my mail kit started. So having built platform on both sides of the email chain, it gives Jacob a unique perspective on email marketing and its impact. Uh, so Jacob has built the company with email reputations and also clients vesting as cornerstone of the reputation. The same no-nonsense approach has been applied when building Omivery, the sister platform of MailKit for transactional sending. Welcome, Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Hi, all of you. How's it going? All right, great. Thank you, and glad to have you. So just quickly about Jack. Jack has been in the email industry for nine years, mm -hmm. and um, he's focused on improving deliverability. He's a fan of helping marketers reach the inbox by leveraging best practices, technology, and partners. All right, so um, welcome, Jack. Thank you. It's great to be here. All right. Great, great. Nice to have you, Jacob and Jack. So um, the floor is open. You can take over now, and um, I will be behind the stage and then get back to you again later. Thank Wonderful. You <clears throat> Thanks so much for the introduction. Jacob, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Jack? I'm doing well. It's good to see you. Nice to see so, you again. So let's jump into this deliverability topic a bit. And I, I think that... Um, <clears throat> You know, where I'd like to start just a, a very high level is, you know, what is deliverability, right? And and I think that, you know, from my perspective, it's pretty simple. It's reaching the inbox. Um, that's what it really comes down to, delivering email into the inbox. But I don't know if you have any kind of thoughts around, you know, just sort of a high level approach to what is deliverability, just so that we can kind of bring everybody up to speed in terms of where we're going with this conversation. It might be helpful. Okay. So... You almost said it, but I don't fully agree. It's not only about reaching inbox, but it's reaching the recipient. So it may not be the inbox. It might be a That's promotion awesome. tab. It might be some some specific tab now, especially with uh, the mailbox providers introducing new ways how to classify uh, different types of messages. It yeah. may not be always the inbox that matters the most. And uh, especially with Gmail, you know, we all know that uh, inbox and promotions are essentially the same. And sometimes it, it actually makes more sense to be in the promotions than an inbox, because that's where people will be looking for that message you're, you're sending. Sometimes for some types of messages, of course, you're targeting the inbox. But overall, it's simply getting in front of the recipient. Reaching the recipient. I love the fact that you brought up uh, and corrected me a smidge. I appreciate that. Uh, with regard to the uh, promotions tab, because there's, and we, we won't go down that rabbit hole right now, but the promotions tab is often uh, viewed as not reaching the recipient when in fact it, it really is reaching the recipient. Um, so that's really good that you, you point that out. From a deliverability perspective, you have this really awesome background of, of delivering email now for the better part of almost two decades, right? And when you look at the landscape of deliverability today versus where it's been and potentially where it's going, do you have a general sense of what you can share in terms of deliverability? Is it is it getting better? Is it is it getting worse? I mean, there's tons of variables involved in probably that answer but i'm just curious like 
when you just look at the state of the industry, are we getting better at delivering email or are we getting worse? Is it static? What, what, what are your thoughts around that? I think there there's a lot of misconceptions uh, around this topic in general. Like saying whether we're getting better or worse uh, is that's that's fairly impossible. I would say that the the good actors are getting better at it, and right. the bad actors okay. have more challenges ahead of them, and as a result, they're uh, having more trouble. And you know, previously, because of how the how the old system that was very much based on uh, IP reputation and some from today's perspective fairly primitive perspective you know yeah. banned words etc uh that was a that was a very much a playground which which could could have been uh easily tricked by the bad actors right. and uh could negatively impact the, the good actors for many different reasons now the systems have evolved now it's not as much about ip reputation that's just a small part of the picture but it's a lot about the main reputation about the infrastructure reputation etc so yeah getting better or worse like from the from I, I i definitely would say that from the receiving perspective it's getting better because people are not getting as much spam as they used to yeah, oh, that, that's a great perspective. I think that um, at least my kind of uh, thoughts on this are over the last, call it five years or so, it seems like um, there has been uh, more effort at discussing what truly is important for good senders to pay attention to as it relates to deliverability. In other words, it's becoming um, you know, it used to be sort of, you felt like it was hidden behind this, this curtain, right? Well, now there, there seem to be, you know, many more conversations going on around the, the key factors um, that help drive, uh, you know, deliverability and reaching the inbox uh, for uh, legitimate senders. And, I, and from my perspective, I think that's a good thing. I think we're talking about it more. We're more aware of it. Um, and I'm assuming you probably see you know, and you, you speak to people all the time that are a little bit more educated on deliverability and ask those kind of leading questions that sort of indicate that they're aware of what they should be doing. They might need help, but they're aware of some of those key factors. Do you feel that that's becoming a more of a thing oh, with, with marketers oh yeah. and senders? Oh, definitely. Uh, you have to keep in mind that 10 years ago, email authentication was, you know, <laughs> That was a that that was not a concept that people were talking about. Everybody was right. talking about, you know, blocking lists, about you know being blocked by spam house or Serbal or this or that. That was right. their that was their concern, right? Right. Uh, when email authentication came into play, and most importantly, DKIM based email authentication, it changed the landscape, and suddenly totally. it's. It's not as much a matter of some magic or you know something some some fiddling around and trying to play the systems or figuring out what am I doing wrong, right. but having a set of guidelines that are there, best practices yeah. that will help you establish a reputation that you can build up on and it's very yeah. simple to to send a single message and to send um, 10 messages an hour or a hundred that's that's very simple right but mm -hmm. once you, once you scale up and you start sending thousands and you start to have uh sending peaks uh when you know suddenly you you go from the thousands into tens of thousands per hour because it's the peak hour and you have lots of orders coming to your e-shop or uh, you have peaks uh, when you when you send to to your your list uh, right that's when it becomes very problematic 
Yeah, so let, let's talk about that a little bit because <clears throat> clearly um, there there is um, you know the challenge of reaching the inbox or reaching the recipient, as you would like to say, um, escalates as you start to send more emails. So let's let's talk about some of those things that um, you know are challenges that you should be aware of as you as you start small and start to scale and send more email. Do you, do you have kind of a, a hit list or a few things that, that people can sort of gravitate towards or kind of focus in on as they start to scale their program, what they should be looking at at certain places or what they should be kind of uh, mm -hmm. monitoring as they go? Yeah, definitely. So first of all, email authentication <laughs> is a must, right? Even though yeah. you, you may think that, you know, you don't have SPF, don't have DKIM and that one single message per day gets through, or those 10 messages per day gets to get through, this changes as you grow, right? Because right. then it's not singular messages where uh, the systems the on, the, on the receiving side can, you know, go through, you know, go through that every single message and analyze the hell out of it and decide whether it's, uh, whether it should, be placed in front of the user or not, but they have to start depending on your reputation. And if you haven't set up your email authentication, then at that moment, you have literally no reputation at all. Right? Right. And, 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 and yes. Yeah. From, from you growing from small to, to big. Which, yeah. And which reputation means, is so important because it, it is who you are at the end of the day and that's as you scale up and send more email they're really looking at your reputation so you've got a reputation you've got uh, you know that uh, is driven by authentication um, as you scale and start sending more more email are there other things that you should be paying attention to that will you know help your overall deliverability yeah and then then comes all the other technical stuff right because again when when you're sending one message to yahoo per hour that's right. one message. That's nothing. Like you're perfectly fine within their rate limits. Uh, now suddenly you have thousand messages in a minute that you want to send, uh, just because you're sending your first newsletter, and uh, they don't know you. They they don't know right. who you are. So uh, they have some weak reputation signal that says, "Okay, we know them." this much we have this much trust so we let them push these this amount of messages in uh so your messages will will start being uh deferred by the receiving servers and that is the first thing you have to look for if your messages are not getting through right away and getting deferred with usually with errors indicating that hey we are rate limiting you. We are not letting you through right now. This is where you have to start focusing your effort on optimizing how you send. A. Okay. And then most importantly, looking at what they're saying. Because you're probably you have probably, if if you get to this point, you have probably already made a mistake somewhere. <laughs> It, it could right. be that that you just grew too fast, right? And your reputation doesn't allow for that, right? Or you were not decom signing, for example. And we see this a lot with uh, with small businesses. They start, you know, they have no idea about decams, etc. That's it's not their business, right? It's not right. What they're focused yeah. on they're focused on business bu building their businesses and not on the technical aspect so it's really important start decom signing early on get dmark so you get dmark reports even if at that stage you get very little information from those dmark reports uh it's important that that you have them because you'll need them later on and then you definitely need to keep an eye on on the deferrals the status 
when when the receiving mail server simply temporarily rejects your your message to be retried later because they just don't trust you at that point yet right so so really what you're saying here is uh, reputation at the end of the day is is job number one as you want to send more email because with that with a reputation that is known um it doesn't it doesn't mean you can go from sending you know 100 email to to a million a minute it, it just means that they recognize you and they'll let you like ramp yep. a little a little faster and trust that what you're sending is is uh, not spam uh, from that perspective right yeah but reputation is not only a, a matter of technical setup it's also about you know following the the content best practices ah, and you know the sub yeah. sub subscriber best practices you want to make sure right. that you're sending right. to people that actually want your emails so uh you <laughs> may think that you're doing it right but if if people don't like it then They'll, they'll not derail your deliverability very fast, won't they? Exactly. And, you know, you yeah. might think I will start with some simple, simple newsletter with some simple, uh, simple text only uh, messaging. And yeah, you saved some time, but you really need to, um, to get uh, your content in place early on. So it's enticing, so it's high quality, well-coded HTML, because that is something that the recipients want. That's what will uh, make them engage with your emails, right? And that's what you, yeah. you're looking for, because your reputation also uh, in, in a big, big part of your reputation is in the engagement of the, of the receiving side. For sure. So, and this is where um, I think sometimes it becomes extremely challenging for people because there's this technical side of, uh, you know, reaching the recipient. And then there's the kind of the creative side, the messaging side of, of reaching the recipient. And even though you might have awesome, uh, you know, just a, a really great reputation from a technical perspective, um, it is absolutely critical that you're sending email that your recipients want to, to read so that, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you're sending, they're expecting. Um, what about links and things of that nature within email? You mentioned, um, you know, uh, you know, quality HTML and things of that nature, but what, what's your, what's your opinion on links, uh, within emails and, and whether or not those will, will mm -hmm. cause any kind of issues. So yes and no. Uh, yeah. Yes, Always. they will cause <laughs> they will they will cause issues if you use if you use URL shorteners or if right. you use uh, third party content that is uh, on a domain that is known to be abused. Uh, so it's it's often the 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 interesting marketing stuff uh that is hyped uh like countdown timers and you know uh interactive elements in email or semi-interactive mm -hmm. animated elements in email that cause most of the trouble right uh yeah that platform then, that, that those platforms often get abused by by bad actors they're not using so their reputation. Their reputation yes. gets so their right. reputation is tanked, <laughs> and suddenly, right. because you have a link to that domain in your yeah. email, that will tank your reputation, right? right. So yeah, it's it's everything is at play here. It's not just your reputation and whether your content is okay, but it has to be clean. It has to be. You have to use. Uh, host your own images you you have to make sure that if you use a third party uh countdown timer that it's uh not hosted on 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 a domain that is blacklisted you know there is a reason why most of these uh services offer uh custom domain 
for the premium plans and not in the free plan because all the abuse happens on the free plans right or, you know everything is <laughs> under that. the same domain right right so there's a lot in that and you, you you need to keep in mind that you know while all of this these are technical aspects the engagement which is non-technical it's about making sure that you have content that is interesting to to the recipients right that's purely non those basic metrics yeah and that has the highest impact on your reputation so you may you may have perfect technical setup everything might be squeaky clean but if you keep sending the you know the the same <laughs> newsletters to your whole list uh every day or twice a day people will get annoyed and they will start marking as at, at spam and, you know and deleting your messages and those are negative signals which will affect your reputation and, you know eventually google will say hey if 10 percent of people mark this as spam or a significant amount of recipients are not liking these messages then right let's put it into spam for everyone right yeah happens all the time you know i, I sometimes equate uh, you know good deliverability um kind of in the context of how you just treat a, a good friend right it's like you know think think of think of your entire email ecosystem as you're trying to be a good steward good friend to whomever has said hey jacob send me that email or jack send me that email treat them treat them with respect authenticate yourself and uh you know always always send send what they're what they're looking for i think that's uh really kind of a simplistic view but at the end of the day it uh, it, it covers a lot of a lot of ground yeah. and one, one so, thing that oh, yeah. one, one thing that uh, i haven't mentioned that is very important is what is uh, the so-called alignment so that the mail from the visible from address that you see in your oh, yeah. email client is aligned with the deacon signature and is aligned with the links that are in the email and all these technical as aspects align on the same domain. The more domains right. you use, more trouble you get into. Right, and that's where subdomains come in and all those types of things. But um, yeah, no, so so alignment is key, um, authentication is key, uh, and messaging is key. Other than that, it's super simple to uh, reach, uh, reach the recipient, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. So. Maybe what we can do kind of as we're, we're nearing our, our, our half hour here, um, maybe we can provide some guidance in a general form for people that do want to scale. Um, assuming, you know, they've got these things, you know, they're, they're, they're authenticated, they've got the, the from address in alignment, mm -hmm. uh, they're sending, you know, proper content, all of those things are in place, they're watching their metrics. Um, is there a rule of thumb that people should follow in terms of how they should scale up, how many they should send, what what the process around that might be? I, I don't know if there's a rule of thumb or if it's just, you know, based on who you're sending through, but but I'd love to get some feedback on that because I'm sure there's people that are like, gosh, I want to just start sending more, but they may not really understand how they should go about that. Yeah, well, the rule of thumb is very difficult because it really depends whether you're B2B, B2C, whether you have uh, large sands or everything is in, is in an automation. So you don't have these uh, sending spikes. So there, there, there's a lot of variation. I right. think if you're sending, if you, if you start sending more than 100,000 emails per month, you should really start looking into what your sending infrastructure is, right? Right. Uh, of course, you know, you, you know, most of the modic users will probably start, you know, on, on the local SMTP, probably running postfix or whatever, uh, which, you know, it's free. Why not? Uh, yeah, but uh, that's uh, that's not a mail server. That's not an MTA that was uh, built for large volumes, uh, good uh, good controls, or any of that. That's uh, it's meant for business to business communication essentially, and uh, that's where you really uh, really need to 
start focusing on it on this because since you don't have the controls once you reach a certain point this is where you go across the line and when you go across that line that you know microsoft allows you and yahoo allows you even though you have done nothing wrong reputation wise content wise etc it's just that technical perspective will uh, get you into big trouble because they expect you to fo follow their rules, but you don't have the control. And that's the moment when you get blocked by Microsoft, for example, right? And right. how do you deal with that when you have very little controls over that platform? So uh, you will have to uh start considering having a professional mta in-house which will cost you uh a pretty penny or you can also decide to build your own mta but good luck with that uh <laughs> and uh or you you have to choose uh you have to choose one of the MTA services uh, that uh, will do the job for you, whether it's whether it's our service or you know any of the offerings on the market right. from Amazon yeah. SES yeah. to SendGrids, SparkPost, etc. Yeah, you know it's so interesting because um, you know in, in terms of um, you know kind of thinking about your reputation and whatnot, if you're using uh, you know something that is free or, or inexpensive. Um, it's critically important that you don't ruin your, your reputation before you switch over to something uh, a little more substantial because that reputation will just flow right over and you'll, you'll, you'll yeah. have yeah. many of the sa same issues, right? Yes, to, to a certain level, yes. Uh, right. First off, uh, it's very easy to tank your reputation. It's much harder <laughs> to build it. Excellent. And it's even <laughs> even harder to rebuild it after you tanked it, right? Yeah. And don't that's tank why it. The, don't infrastructure, tank it. The, the infrastructure is very important because if you're on a shared infrastructure where uh, a lot of abuse is happening, and it, whether it's whether it's a whether it's a cloud service that you're using or you, your your servers are hosted on on a network that is you know. The IP next to you is uh, is a forum trading stolen credit card numbers that will affect you. So your neighborhood right. is extremely <laughs> extremely important, right? Right. And it's really right. hard to to fix this type of issues, right? So you have yeah. to think about it very early on, right? Because no, it will so it will follow you, and also your neighborhood is very important. Right. It can it can tank you, but it can also bring you up if you have no reputation, you're starting and have very low or no reputation at all. But you come from a very good, respectable neighborhood that can bring you up that much faster. Yeah, that's uh, it's really, really um, important, important advice. I mean, the, the big thing there is uh, don't tank your reputation because that therein lies the biggest challenge of ever reaching the recipient. Um, it's just compounded and you can't, you can't get away from it once you've kind of done it. It's, it's really hard to get away from it anyway. Um, so kind of in closing before we get to potentially any, any questions that some of the, the folks might have, um, do you have uh, some recommendation for like a handful of good resources where people, if they're really looking for, you know, kind of the nuts and bolts. I mean, there's so many different, you know, blogs out there now, mm -hmm. you know, lots of different people, lots of different companies, um, you know, provide some guidance, but do you, do you have any kind of go to one, two, three? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, what so, do you recommend? So, uh, Al Iverson runs a uh, spam resource, which is a great yeah. resource, not about spam, yeah. but, uh, about, you know, non spam operations. Uh, so that that yeah. is uh, that, that's a great resource, uh, definitely not for spammers, but uh, for good actors. Yeah. Uh, Kickbox is producing fantastic blogs uh, about 
all topics related to deliverability and you know list ma list management cleaning uh of course they're they're uh more marketer oriented resources as well litmus has been uh, added for for yeah. years you know you can you can go to uh validity for for their blogs like there's yeah. so many resources of course, you, you should uh, read the best practice documents uh, produced by Mark, the M messaging malware. Uh, what is it? Working group. Uh, messaging mobile malware a working group. Uh, <laughs> anti abuse so working group. It's it's just so, so such a such a long name that uh, I don't even That's remember awesome. it. Yeah, yeah. Bottom line is there's lots of different places to go. Those are some really good recommendations. I think that most of uh, the reputable uh, ESPs out there anymore have some pretty good uh, blog entries around deliverability yes. for people that are looking for it. Um, and of course, people are always uh, welcome to you know ping you or me for some some help or some guidance just to kind of get them going in the right direction so that's great um i think that kind of covers it from my perspective we can certainly open it up to see if there are any uh particular questions that uh, people might have um yeah i think we have a we have Ruth Cheesley asking what steps do you suggest taking where something has gone wrong with deliverability <laughs> That's a that's Man. a tough one. First off, first off, do not even think about uh, trying to bypass the the roadblocks in in your way. Like if you're trying to play the uh, play the the receiving side, whether it's Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, or a small mailbox smaller mailbox provider, if you try to circumvent their blocks and do anything uh to bypass that that's gonna get you into more trouble that's gonna get you on their block lists that's gonna you know brand you as a bad actor what right. you want to do is first analyze the root cause right so you yep. definitely want to look into your logs. Start with the logs. Start with the early deferrals because the early deferrals are telling you what's going to come next, right? If there, if if the mailbox provider first told you slow down and you don't slow down, then they will be blocking you. But if you're only looking at that block message that you got blocked and your message was bounced then you're not looking at the original reason, which was that you were sending too fast, right? So you have to analyze your logs. You have to look into the root cause. And then you have to go and ask for help, ask for mit mitigation, you know, reach out to the receiving side uh, through their postmaster page, through their... Uh, whatever uh whatever support channel they might have uh you have to reach out and ask for help explain your situation and try to get their help right and yeah. if you explain your situation properly and uh truthfully they are going to give you the guidance, uh, unblock you, etc., cetera, uh, etc., cetera, just to get your messages delivered. But they will yeah. they will not help you if you're trying to circumvent them. So yeah, it kind of gets back to that reputation thing again, right? <laughs> sort of. All right. Yeah, I just have uh, be be honest with it, uh, and then you'll you. You'll get a lot of help uh, to, to rectify any kind of situation. Great, great feedback, Jacob, for sure. Yeah. Okay, great. So I can see you moved to the questions and answers already. Okay, so um, before we go to um, last question, I, I would like to ask you about Bimi. 
What do you think about people helping reputation or getting the know the bag? Okay, so Bimi is not going to help you with your reputation. Bimi is dependent on your reputation. So uh, if you don't have good enough reputation, even if you get Bimi and you buy the certificate, Google will not display your logo or Yahoo. They will not display your logo if your reputation is not good enough. Bimi is sort of a carrot for you to get all your email authentication in place and deploy right. uh, DMARC policy reject or quarantine to tighten up your your email program so your your reputation can be well attributed to you and then if you have a good reputation then you can reap the advantage of having a BME. Right. So it means if you don't have a good reputation, then spending so much thousands of dollars on BME doesn't really worth it. Yeah. Okay. So let's quickly, before I go into other question I have, let's quickly look at the question from Lassen. Um, Jay Lassen is asking, looking at your service now, how important is the email validation API is not there yet? Is, the, is this something that needs contribution or engineering around? Uh, no, we do have email validation API in our service. We actually use a third party, uh, which is highly reputable. Uh, it's Kickbox because uh, when we looked at all the uh, providers of email validation services, uh, they fit our needs and the needs of our clients best. So we, we work with them and uh, our email validation API is, uh, or their email validation is available in our APIs. All right, great. So quickly, um, let's quickly go to another question and um, this has to do with Google recent announcements about um, deleting emails by end of this year um, that are not active. So what, what do you think marketers should need to do to start preparing for this? Yeah, well, I'm kind of surprised that it took them so long. But uh, <laughs> uh, if, if you're doing it right, if you're doing it correctly and you're processing your bounces and you remove the Correct. inactive users, then you know, you're know you good. But right. if you're not processing the bounces, then you have a problem and you will have a massive problem, of course, right? But uh, other than that, it's it's not a big deal. Yahoo has been deleting inactive mailboxes for, for years and they, they do it uh, sometimes uh, throughout the year on, on a regular basis. Sometimes they, they don't do it for, for a longer period of time and then they just delete tons and tons of mailboxes on a, on a single day and you get a massive amount of bounces at once but uh that's that's life uh you have to keep an eye on the engagement like if you were sending to people who haven't opened your emails for for years and haven't clicked interacted in any way then you're doing it stop wrong sending. <laughs> stop sending to those people right. yep. as i said it's all about engagement engagement right. is your friend if they're not engaging they're hurting your reputation, right? So don't send to those who are not engaged and remove them from your list. Okay, all right. So um, I, I know you did um, answer this earlier about resources. Uh, I wouldn't know if you can drop the links in the chat so that anyone that comes to watch this video after this, because people are in different time zones, so some people may not be able to join right away. They can easily pick up those links in the chat box. Um, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, okay. so just uh, before we go, we are almost done. All right. 
Okay, I, I know you did mention a lot about what could get email into spam boxes when you um, send in promotional email, emails or you're sending too frequently when um, the, the receiver is not requesting for those emails. Are there any other reasons why you could get your emails to land in spam? And then also, I, I know earlier on this call, you did mention that it's better to get yourself a promotion than to get yourself an inbox. Maybe you might want to talk more about that again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So go ahead, Jacob. Don't worry whether you're in inbox or promotions, because it's all about whether people engage, whether they like it, right? If if you have a provider like Gmail, where people are used to working with folders, uh, they will look for your message in the promotions. Mm -hmm. That's that's something they're used to. And as long as they're reading it, as long as you're they're interacting with your emails, engaging, you're good. That's what you want. The, uh, you want to make money ultimately somehow out of your emails. So you want that engagement and right. sending to unengaged just costs you money. Hope that answers the question. And promotions yes, tab yes, is not yes, bad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes, also, yes. also there, right, there's one, one thing that, you know, is rarely discussed, but there is a thing that is called retroactive operations or retroactive actions, which is when the mailbox provider takes all the messages from the folder where they've been and move them to another folder. And that usually happens around an hour after delivery. But if your message gets marked by spam, even though it landed originally in, in inbox or promotions, but it lands in spam, uh, it, it lands in inbox, but is being marked as spam. People don't like it. People delete it. People mark it as junk. The mailbox providers will silently take all the unopened messages of all the recipients who haven't seen the message yet and move it to spam. Wow. So that's wow. the moment when your reputation is affected the most because mm -hmm. every the, the the bulk of of the group of that cluster said this is bad and if the bulk of the cluster moves you into the bad category then your reputation goes down very fast mm -hmm. so your next send you're likely to see your messages hitting the spam folder. Yep. And interaction okay. going down as well. Yeah. All right, great. So so just one last question. <laughs> Let's quickly talk about authentication, DMAC. Okay. So um what, what are the things people should look out for? Because that is very important part. I, I know SPF records are also important, but DMAC more important. And then also um, when we look at the DMAC um the, the, the DMAC, um, what is it called, um, that you receive via your emails? What information should people look out for when they read the DMAC reports? So um, <laughs> I usually have a, a training about uh, email authentication that takes three hours, but uh, <laughs> let's, let's put it simple. Uh, SPF and DKIM are what authenticates your email, how you say, this comes from me this comes from right. an authentic source that my domain my brand uh works with we stand behind it we say this is us right dmark is used to enforce your policies so you can say these are my sources they are authenticated and if something is on is not authenticated, then I want to enforce a certain policy because I think it might be a fish or it might be dangerous or anything. So 
I want this to be quarantined or rejected. That's a policy. But the most important part of DMARC is its reporting. When, when it gives you the report, that gives you the perspective of the receiver side. So it comes from the receiving side perspective of how they are looking at the mails that are coming from you. So it shows you what your mail sources are, where what's your infrastructure, what's the infrastructure of those who are trying to abuse you, possibly, uh, and allows you to deploy uh, the email authentication correctly. Because while everybody thinks that SPF is simple, it's not, it's very complicated. And it gets more complicated as you grow, as your infrastructure grows. So it's really important to have DMARC early on and look at the reports to see how are you being seen by the receiving side. And then you can act on it. You can make adjustments. Make adjustments. Adjust your SPF, adjust the DKIMs if they're missing, etc. Okay. All right. That's really, really um, good to know. Um, I would like to appreciate again um, Jacob and um, Jack for this wonderful mm -hmm. session. Um, it's been really interactive and also um, it's been also full of a lot of knowledge and a lot of things that I believe that a couple of people listening on this call will go and change or do better um, from now on. Um, really appreciate you all. All right. Thank you so Thanks. much, everyone, for your time, for joining Thanks this for session. Having us. Thank yeah. you for having us. Yeah. yeah. All right, so please do stay back. We have another session starting in about less than 12 minutes where we will be talking about another interesting topic. So you don't want to miss that. All right, do have a lovely um, morning, afternoon, or evening where you are. See you in about 12 to 10 minutes. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.